I've been around airplanes my whole life, I've been around aviation my whole life. I got that bug at an early age. I always worked with my hands. I worked on cars for a long time. I was a little kid that got a train set and I'm disassembling them and putting them back together. But I was 32 before I actually got into aviation. I was a stay-at-home mother uh, and I decided when my child started school I needed to, you know, make a choice what I want to do with the rest of my life. Yeah, it's to me, I think this is a, a dream job every night coming in and just amazing. Every day is something different. I always wanted to understand how the airplane actually worked, you know, what makes this machine fly 500 miles an hour. I love aircraft and so I love working on airplanes and I love being around airplanes. We got the hangar doors open, it's a nice morning and you see that plane taking off and you know you did your job. There are people like me, certificated mechanics, who put our name on the line uh, and we do it every day and the reason that aircraft are safe are because of people like us. Aircraft maintenance, in a nutshell, is um, making sure the airplane is safe to fly. Um, we all have automobiles, and we know we have to inspect them probably annually in your state. Uh, airplanes require a lot more inspections. We're doing inspections every few days. Um, some components or parts on the airplane are due to be changed, whether it's how many times the aircraft lands or how many hours we've flown the aircraft. If you hear the maintenance is getting on your aircraft, it's, it's more of a good thing than a bad thing, you know, because we're looking at stuff and we're double-checking stuff. Maintenance is called to the aircraft when there is a system or a component not functioning properly and that can be indicated either by um, a light in the flight deck or something uh, just not feeling right with the pilots during the pilot walk around, um, just, just a number and a range of things. With the placement of these maintenance bases and opening of new maintenance bases, uh, I believe it's to help better our reliability, you know, better serve the passengers. And, and to better serve, you know, mainline American. Line maintenance is basically the process is your aircraft fly every day and they come in and they land at your airports and any number of small things might be wrong with them. Aircraft maintenance isn't like a car where you can let little things go. Safety is obviously a huge concern. So we have all these guys ready on line maintenance to respond to these discrepancies and fix them to get the plane back in the air and get them flying again safely the same day. So the pilot, whatever situation you has, he will call dispatch, dispatch calls maintenance control, and they will contact our supervisor, our lead, and then our lead will pick someone to go out there and see what's going on. The biggest challenge is it's busy. So you'll always get constant calls because there's a lot of flights that come out of Philly. Philly's maintenance department is, uh, is unique. Just because we have over 100 flights a day that go through here. These planes, you'll see the same plane come back to Philly two or three times in one day. So when I hit this switch, we're supposed to be going up on this. Then when I hit it down, nothing. That's the discrepancy. And as far as that's concerned, we change the switch. Any aircraft mechanic is gonna tell you the most important tool we have is the AMM. Uh, the aircraft maintenance manual is an AM, aircraft maintenance technician's Bible. The maintenance crew here, it's a team. They uh, pretty much all come from different backgrounds. We're all aircraft mechanics, but we all have a different set of skills that are tailored to the last profession that we were in. And it moves, so it works. Now we'll put everything together nice and neat and sign it off. Line maintenance, you have to work together and you have to understand how all of the bits and bubbles interact and you have to support each other and keep a good attitude. So it's really, it's not an individual person and here at Piedmont, uh, maintenance control plays a very large part of the line maintenance experience and so it's a, it's always a team effort, rarely do we go out to the aircraft by ourselves. Typically if we get a call from maintenance control, we either try to find out if we'll need parts or any reference material, get all that, try to get as much as we can here and then go to the airplane and try to determine 
from there what's actually broken or what we might need. And at the end of the day, it's the ultimate call whether the captain's going to take the aircraft or not. So, it, you know, again, it's a team effort. You have dispatch, you have maintenance control, you have the line maintenance, and you have the flight crew. So we've all got to work together as a team. An overnight maintenance is more routine, uh, more in-depth than checking the airplane out and making sure that we don't have gate calls in the morning. RON stands for remain overnight. An aircraft remains overnight. Um, you're ex most of the time you're expected to bring it in your hangar and work on it. Overnight uh, we'll do checks, uh, PS1, PS2. Uh, basically it's a light check or a little bit heavier check. Check over the airplane, hydraulics, O2, seats, belts. Try and catch stuff before it breaks so it doesn't. I'm just doing an inspection that the uh, um, the component is actually um, good for flight. A lot of the tests that we use, they're called uh, bit tests, built-in test. Um, literally just have to hit a button and the computer runs its own self-diagnostics. Um, and oftentimes it Light tests the peripheries around it as well. Oh, Wind shear. Wind shear. Wind shear. When you get failures and a lead failures decides what work is going to be done on the aircraft that night um, and how that's going to be accomplished. Organizes who's going to perform what task as well as ensure paperwork is uh, done properly, the paperwork is complete. Again, you're, you're saying you're the one that did this. Not only that, but also we're keeping track of the parts and things like that that are on each particular aircraft. Well, on HAC, we just started recently doing them. Uh, basically, that's more involved. We're going to be we're pulling panels, looking deeper into the airplane, uh, looking deeper into different areas as in the wing, underneath the belly of the airplane. They're all routine, but each one's different levels. Whenever the aircraft is due in for maintenance, it's already pre-scheduled to come in and get a, a part of an A-check and then come back the next night to finish up again. We don't really have an average night. Every night, you know, we have something different going on. It's it's never the same night. You never know what you're, what you're getting coming in. There's always that constant communication between the bases because you never know. They might have a problem that we've worked on before and they've never seen before, and we can give them some insight on what, what needs to happen. Road trip is basically we get a, a plane that's not in a maintenance base or a line station, and we basically piece together a couple people, parts, anything we might possibly need and either fly or drive to that city to fix the airplane and get it back up. So any time that we would be sent on a road trip would be because we can't, a uh, pilot made a write-up and we can't MEL it. Um, so it has to be fixed or has, somebody has to do something so that the plane can fly either to a maintenance base for a ferry flight or it can be put back into revenue service because you're taking the parts up to fix it. Usually the way we approach road trips here in Middletown is everybody kind of works together. Maintenance control will get the call from the crew, they'll make the ride up, and then maintenance control will decide, you know, are we going to MEL it, are we going to road trip, and then it basically it trickles down. We call maintenance control, find out exactly what's going on. If the crew is available, we talk to them and, and get their input. I'll work with the supervisor and, and I'll work with the guy that's going and, and uh, we'll get all the parts together and you know and then we'll just do a double check you know you have this you have that you got your tools you got your driver's license your company ID all that all the stuff that you would need to take a road trip we have a good um, knowledge base here in Middletown a lot of the guys that we have have been with the company for some of them a lot longer than I have um, and we also have a lot of new guys um, who are also very capable um, some of them are really good and they, they're going to be really good mechanics too um, if they get a couple more years under their belt. Sometimes the manufacturer will put out a modification and usually it's optional. Hey we found a, a better system um, if you want it here's how much it costs to put on the airplane. Slowly and surely we are making the mods for every single aircraft. Um, so we're doing an ADSB out uh, mod, we're doing a bleed sleeve mod, um, pressure regulator shut off valve mod, um, and most of those mods are designed to make the airplane more reliable. 
and we have seen great success on the aircraft that we modded. The one thing about Salisbury, obviously, being the headquarters of Piedmont, that's uh, that's a big thing where you have, uh, you know, director of maintenance, VP of maintenance right here in-house. But also, we've always just been a heavy maintenance base uh, with the Dash 8s. We were doing the heavy checks on them. It's awesome. I, I love it uh, just because I get to see things that most people don't get to see. Um, everyone sees pictures of cockpits, but I get to see inside the cockpit, a deeper inside than everyone else gets to see. Uh, modern normally takes about 10 days, so it's, it's a very coordinated uh, system. It's sort of juggling airplanes around. Those guys in the back, they're great fabricators. They can make just about anything, especially when it comes to sheet metal, uh, hydraulic lines, things like that. And that is um, a skill that is picked up over time. So that's something that really the experience level comes into play. We worked on the dash and it's, it definitely was sad at one point. Uh, seeing, seeing something that you've worked on for so many years leave and then something new comes in and we all love the new stuff but it is kind of like just sad that you won't get to work on something again. But at the same time it's, it's, it's a chapter ending and a new one beginning because uh, you know with the 145s it's, it's a different aircraft to learn, it's a different thing to undertake and you know we're still learning new things every day. I mean these guys talk about the dash a lot and you can tell it's obvious that time on a system builds experience and makes you a great mechanic with them. They talk about it and tell stories all the time. And I just hope that being with them, going off their expertise, that I can someday reach the same levels of a system like the Embraer 145. Our base in Albany is new. Um, the company realized with the growth of the company, the amount of aircraft that we are acquiring, we need another maintenance space. Albany being in the, in the northern market, um, within a few hours of a drive, we can drive to a lot of northern cities to fix broken aircraft that might be there. Thank you also for inviting us to be part of the Albany Airport family here. Uh, Piedmont Airlines, we're still a small regional carrier and we like to think of ourselves and, and we are uh, a family, a Piedmont family. So today we've, we've kind of just recognized the fact that the base is up and running, fully operational. Uh, we still have a little bit ways to go in terms of hiring the rest of the 36 mechanics, but for the most part we're working on two to three planes a night and we're rocking and rolling and it's going well. So everybody came together to sort of show like their appreciation for the whole, the whole operation. American slash Piedmont are more than willing to invest money uh, and it's a lot of money to open up a new base. All the tooling and just the, the actual lease of a hangar, um, it's, it's a great sign that they're going to invest money to make sure that we're successful. Uh, I'm excited to see what comes in the future, like what kind of work we get, you know, uh, as they we start to get more and more and mechanics and how it's going to work out and what we're going to be able to accomplish as a base. We need 17 more mechanics just in Albany. And now with our rate of growth, now's a good time to get in. Get in, get the experience, get into lead mechanics, supervisor. As we continue to grow, now's the time. Where it kind of takes the edge off of getting hired as the new guy when everybody else is sort of the new guy as well. So we can all sort of help each other out and, and bounce off each other. Yeah, you know, I, I tell them, people ask me, we had two new guys start last night. And they're like, Dave, what's you know what what's you know what am I gonna feel? I says, guys, don't be in a hurry. You just do your job every day, and in two to three months, you're gonna feel like a seasoned professional. And it's not just one person doing it. You know, it's nice working with a group of people because you throw ideas around. One thing you can always take pride in, you know, you have a great group of mechanics working together. Uh, the old saying is, uh, when you don't even have to talk to each other. I know it sounds weird but uh, when you know exactly what the other mechanics are doing, you know what they're setting up for, you're working at the same time to set up with them and that's, that's always a good feeling. If I have a part in solving the problem and you know, correcting the issue and that plane is able to then go out and doesn't have the problem that it came in with. When it's filled with passengers and I look at 
departure times and it shows an on-time or early departure. There's no better feeling than watching that plane that you've worked on all day, put all this time and effort in, take off safely with all the people on board. You know, we always follow it until basically to the point that you can't see it. Breathtaking. It's, sometimes it literally will take your breath away. You know, the drive home the next morning is like, well, we did it. We got it done again.